If you ever considered moving to a new city to pursue a career in the entertainment industry, then today's show is for you. Today's guest, Christian Torres Villalobos, is a Bronx native who traded his nine to five for a full-time career as a working actor. He's here to talk about his journey to the big screen and how he hopes to inspire others to conquer their fears and start living their dreams. Hi guys, welcome back to the Creators Club where we find out what drives artists and creative professionals just like you. I'm David George and I'm here with Christian. Christian, how are you? I'm so you great. know, I'm actually just gonna let you tell everybody your full name because I'm gonna butcher it and it's not gonna be it's not gonna be cool. So give him your full name. Well, thank you for having me. My name is Cristian Torre Villalobos. Yes. And in your words, what would you say is your profession? What's your title? I'm an actor. You're an actor. Great. So um, the reason why I actually invited you to the Creators Club is because I feel like I've never had a chance to sit down and have a conversation with an actor. Okay. I know a lot of dancers who act or you know, do something else and yeah, just yeah. kind of act. But like I, I told you and when I hit you up, it's like I've been following your content for a little bit and I'm like, okay, um, one, I remember specifically one time I was over at Bayou Place hanging with Norbert and yeah. you were watching um, some like motivational content. Yeah, the content. And I was like, yeah. yes, he gets it. He's inspired <laughs> and he's motivated and I love that. Um, but just also like I see, I see your videos and I see you hustling yeah. out there grinding as an actor. So I just Thank really you. kind of wanted to get into your head a little bit and, sure. and pick your brain on that. So I guess what we can start is like, what's your story? What got you to LA? Well, um, I was born in Puerto Rico and raised in New Jersey in order for my mother to get us out the street and not to have us involved. Um, we didn't really live in a very good place. Mm -hmm. Uh, she put us in performing arts schools. Um, wow. so in elementary school, we went to a performing arts school that we had to sing, dance, act, play instruments and do fine art. Mm. Um, after elementary school, I went into high school and did theater, uh, musical theater, all types of, um, theater competitions, statewide and countrywide traveling, um, just acting. Um, and then after college, I, I got a sales job. Oh, okay. Um, and for three years, I was working corporate sales, and I was making very good money, but I was miserable. Mm. And um, one day I got home, and I was just like, is this life? My bank account's nice, <laughs> but, but is this is life? This life? Yeah, Am I yeah, going to yeah. come home every day, sit on my couch, and be miserable? Um, so that's when I had that conversation with my dad, which is probably one of the most influential people in my life, because nice. he made the sacrifice to leave Puerto Rico in his profession to come here for our education. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the hardest thing, you know, wow. old school Puerto Rican father. And I'm telling him, hey, I'm going to leave a secure job to pursue a dream. In his eyes, it was a maybe. In his mm -hmm. eyes, it was empty. Uh, aspirations mm. um you know growing up in a in a household like that it's very secure secure mm -hmm. you have to be secure you have to make sure you make a living you have to make sure you you have enough to raise a family um and i wasn't about that right you know i, I told him i'd rather be happy with what i'm doing and broke uh, <laughs> but happy with but happy with what i'm doing um <laughs> than being successful in a, in a field that I'm not happy doing. Yeah. Um, so I did acting for about three years in New York and I built up my resume and I had to take the next step. Nice. So. Before we get into your career, I just want to say, um, I actually have a similar story. Nice. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but my parents are actually immigrants from Honduras. Oh. And my mom um, came to Boston when she was in high school, about like 16 years old. Yeah. And same thing there. Very, very poor country. And they're, they're, they're kind of taught you work, I mean, you grow to be old enough to work, and that's mm -hmm. like about like 14, 13 years old, maybe even 11, yeah. um, maybe even younger. Um, and once you get you know big enough to be able to, to work and make money, that's what you do. And same thing kind of happened for me when I started getting older and realized what my true passion was of uh, being a, a performer, um, you know, I was putting a lot of my focus and attention into that. And yeah. my mom supported it when I, when I was younger, but as I got older and was moving into college and talked about moving to New York, it was mm -hmm. kind of like, wait, you want to move to New York and become oh a dancer? Goodness. Like, no, like people where we're from or like in our family, we're poor. Mm -hmm. she, like even college, she didn't think was an option for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that wasn't an option. And just also she tried to teach, tell me, I won't say teach me, <laughs> tell me that like I should just get a job, work and, and call it a day. You know yeah. what I mean? But like you, I knew that wasn't life for me. Yeah. I just knew that there was something more out there. So I did a lot of my own research. I mm -hmm. transferred to colleges three times. Fun fact. So... <laughs> 
My first school that I went to was called Nichols College. It was a small mm-hmm. business school in Massachusetts. Got it. First semester, hated it. Two weeks in, I was like already putting new applications in the transfer. Hated it, hated it, hated it because it completely took me away from my ability to be able to be around people that did what I did, that liked what I liked. I wasn't dancing anymore. Mm-hmm. It was very, very hard. So two weeks in, I was applying to transfer. Um, from there, I transferred back into a school in Boston called Suffolk University. Mm-hmm. Um, very expensive school, but I was like, I got to get out of this freaking town that oh, yeah. is killing me. Um, going to Suffolk was bad. Actually, I mean, wasn't bad. I actually really liked that school and that mm-hmm. program um, because I was right in the middle of the city, downtown Boston. I was still able to see my family what I wanted. Right. I was still able to, to be in the, the dance company at that time that I was in. Um, so that was great. But I had some friends that moved to New York mm-hmm. um, uh, as freshmen in college and also some other friends that were a little bit older. And they were in New York, like, going to auditions and getting callbacks, all this stuff. And I was like, I have to leave because... Yeah. I have to get my feet wet. Mm-hmm. Originally, my plan was I'm going to finish school and then I'm going to focus awesome. on that. But then I kind of realized, like, I have to start now. I have to start figuring it out now. So, again, I applied <laughs> to some new schools <laughs> and I got into St. John's University, which was actually the cho- choice that I wanted. Yeah. Um, they gave me a pretty decent financial aid package and that's where I went. Cool. So, um, I know a lot of people consider moving to new cities and new towns. And I would say if you're in school, that's probably one of the best ways to make the transition while you still can have like room and board accounted for exactly. and Food. just some type of situation so you're not just going out into the world completely blind. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, same thing. So yeah, what I wanted to pursue uh, in my family and just also people where I'm from, that wasn't the norm. Wasn't like the norm. a career in entertainment and being a dancer, mm-hmm. like we, I've never, no one in my family has done anything like that. No one in my family has businesses. You know what I mean? So that was just kind of like, I mean, I guess, but <laughs> I think you should just get a job. And, you know, so even once I graduated college, I was like, all right, I'm done. So now I'm going to be a dancer. And my mom was like, you just went to school for four years to study business to be a dancer yeah, so after that. Like, it just yeah. didn't make sense. But I always knew what my plan was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm here. But anyways, exactly. let's talk about career. So what are sure. some things you've been up to um, since you've gotten to L.A.? Oh, man, there's been a lot. Um, L.A. has been... A blessing, truly. I, I have a feature film uh, that we're actually screening uh, this year. So it's going to be screening this year. We're flying to New York to screen that. It's called The Trouble. Um, I also have a, f- a feature film. Um, yet it's in post-production now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Urbana La Película. It's mm-hmm. a um, bilingual film. Wow. Um, so we shot that one in New York, Miami, Panama, Puerto Rico, and Colombia. My character, <laughs> let, let, let me explain. My character was only in New York and Miami. I didn't go to other um, places. Um, that's currently in post productions. They're doing some pickup shots. So hopefully by 2018, that'll, that'll be out um, and we'll be getting the ball rolling. Congratulations. How Thank long you. have you been living in LA? Two years. In okay. February, it makes two years. So talk to me a little bit about, first of all, what um, inspired you to make the transition to L.A.? And then once you got here, like, what were some things that you would say, shit, I wish I knew X, Y, and Z before I made the transition? And just, like, I want to kind of get to nitty-gritty. Like, was it tough? Was it easy? What was going on? Well, the reason why I decided to move to L.A. was because I needed to get out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Um, At the time that I made the decision, I was already three years in acting. Um, in New York, and I felt that I was working a lot, but it was a lot of the same type of things, okay. you know, um, small indie projects, you know, and, and that paid, but paid very, very, very little. little. Um, and I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. I felt that I needed to get to the next level. And in order to get to the next level, you have to make yourself uncomfortable. Absolutely. Um, and it's always... When Sorry, you're, repeat that. To get yourself to the next level, you have to, to make, make yourself, yourself uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah, that was um, it. And, and um, when you're home, you know, New Jersey, Patterson, New York, though, that's home to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're home, you, ha- you, you have a secure blanket. You have a security blanket. Your family's there. Your friends are there. Mm-hmm. So no matter how hard you hustle, there's a lack. Yeah, because you know you're, you're comfortable. Gonna be you're yeah. going to be fine. When you need something, you can go to them. I was tired of that. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, to be uncomfortable. I wanted to go through a struggle because, yes, I've been through obstacles, but a real struggle I never had to go through because I had my support system nice. physically there. Okay. Um, and that's when I called my cousin. I was in, um, in Queens in my car 
and I called my cousin, um, which at the time was by Coastal, and I'm like, hey, how do you like LA? My cousin's a dancer, mm -hmm. and um, he was like, eh. <laughs> he was like, eh, it's not New York, but this is where the work is. Yeah. I'm like, okay, say no more. I sold some stuff, got myself ready, and then maybe a month or two after, I ship my car and don't look back. Mm -hmm. um, and he was telling me, no, wait, just come here for a couple of weeks and then and test and, it out, and test it out to see if you like it. The thing is, I, I can't, I can't like test the water. Yeah, you yeah. know, I have to jump D in. Dive right in. I have to dive in. <laughs> um, so the next, I told him, hey, I booked my flight. It's a one-way flight. I shipped my car. I'll be there in two weeks. Mm -hmm. He was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but honestly, right now, I feel that it's the best decision I've ever made for my career, for my personal growth. Well, sorry, I mean, cut you off. At that time, did you feel like, what the hell did I just do? The first couple of months? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I had nothing secure. I had okay. no job lined up. Yeah. Um, I, w I had some money in the bank. So, you know, I was relying on my savings and a couple of maybe opportunities, okay, you know, okay. you know, a lot of people promise you things, but until it's on paper, it's not guaranteed. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I followed my heart, you know, I followed my heart and, um, I made the move, you know, and the first couple of months was tough because I kept on comparing it to New York. Mm -hmm. Kept on comparing it to Patterson, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, the people aren't the same. The food sucks, and this and that. That there's no bacon, egg, and cheese. The pizza tastes disgusting. You know, the bagels taste like bread. Yeah. You know. Um. But it's until I realized that you can't compare. You need to accept both animals because these uh -huh. this is two different yeah. monsters for what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. Um, that I didn't start. You know, I started feeling like home. I'm like, okay, maybe this can be my home. Maybe yeah. this can be where my career gets me to the point that I can go back home and, and surprise my parents with a U-Haul truck and say, hey, I bought you a new house. I love that. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't look back. Yeah. I got hired people to pack this truck. I love it. I'm taking you to the new house. Let's pause real quick. I want to talk about um, what you just mentioned just accepting things for face for face value yeah. and choosing your battles. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I feel like I have a lot of conversations with people who have moved out here in the last like year or two mm -hmm. and that's kind of like their number one thing. Oh, it's not like New York. Oh, it's not like this because of transportation or because of yeah. whatever reasons. But I always I always challenge people to kind of think about like is that a real issue? Is that a real issue and is it an issue that you can control? And it's like I've noticed that a lot of people allow things that they can control to affect them or hold them back from opportunities when it's like, if you really are sick of Ubers and in the bus, save your money and get a car. a car. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, don't yeah, keep yeah. complaining about it. Set it as a goal mm -hmm. and get a car. And just like moving, it's like people back in New York or just anywhere, people I have conversations with, I want to move to LA. I want to, I want to, I want to, but finance, finance, finances. I set a goal. My sister and I went on vacation to Honduras last yeah, yeah. summer and we were out by the pool and we had some champagne. We were like, <laughs> you know what? Let's move in the fall. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. this was about July. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved out here November 1st of last year. So what is that? July, August, September, October, November. Five months. I set the goal and I stuck to that. And I moved. I didn't, same as you, I didn't come here with a plan or a secure job or really a lot of things in place. But mm -hmm. I trusted myself and I trusted yeah. I knew that this was where I needed to be. Exactly. So for anybody out there that's contemplating making a move to a city, set the goal. Create a timeline. Set a date. I set a date. I was like, yeah. November 1st, I'm moving. And just like you, when I was approaching, I'm like, well... Got to get rid of this thing. Let me sell that. Let me, you know what I mean? It's like, but I was committed to that date. Exactly. So don't like kind of be iffy about it and not really be specific about it mm -hmm. because then it's just going to like two years is going to go by. A year is going to go by and you didn't do it yet. The you know thing, what I mean? The so, thing is you have to be specific about what you want. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that um, whatever you throw at the universe, it throws back at you. Absolutely. So if you put positivity and you set a goal, a deadline, it'll happen because you believe that it happened. Right. You know, if you set your mind to it, it's already happened, you know, um, and that's what I did. I mean, you're never going to be ready to make that big step. You know, there's nothing like there's no such thing as being prepared. You're never going to be prepared to take chances. You're never going to be prepared to to take that leap of faith. 
you're just going to have to take the leap and hope that you fall somewhere soft. Right. You know, right. <laughs> that, that's right. what it is. It's like, mm-hmm. you, you're never going to be prepared to make a life changing decision. Yeah. You know, because, um, interesting, I was reading an article and they were saying that our minds are set up to protect us from things that will harm us. And we have a five second window mm-hmm. to make a decision. So before your mind kicks in to protect you, you have a five second window to make that decision whether you're going to actually take the leap mm-hmm. or talk yourself out of or it. Or talk yourself out of it. Yeah. You know, and in that five seconds, you can change your life forever. Absolutely. You know? What's some advice that you would give to somebody who wants to get into acting? What, what would you say would be, should be their first step? The first step, you know, you, you're going to need headshots. I think that's the first mm-hmm. step, you know, because you can go to classes and classes is a very good way to network. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have a headshot and people ask you, hey, send me your headshot. Maybe I can, you know, I can refer get you, you to, a, a to, 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 to somebody. You know, you don't have no credentials. You have nothing. Get yourself a headshot, you know. And don't be afraid to work for free. I mean, for the for the first year and a half, I was working for free, dude. I did everything for free. My first check was $80. And yeah. I was ecstatic. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, until this day, I still yeah. have a copy of that check. Yeah. And I look at it all the time. Yeah, and that's because we're not saying like let someone take advantage of you or use you. What we're saying is that's how you build your portfolio. Yeah. That's how you become more marketable. Like, trust me, like perfecting your craft and, and building your skill is, it should be your number one priority. Once you're great at what you do, the money will come. Exactly. Don't ever rush the reward. And even even once you get to a certain level that you are getting paid and you're making a living off of what you do, it's okay to do some projects for free if you believe in the production. Right. You know, um, there's so many actors that do two or three different things that are creating their own web series that that they have a pilot or or they have a short film and uh, they'll approach you and say, "Hey, I'm doing a table read." Go to the table, read, meet people, shake hands. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you build relationships. Yeah, and I think um, automatically whenever somebody presents an artist, you Mm -hmm. know, with a free project, they automatically put up like this defense mode. They're like, no, you should pay me to die. And truthfully, like I've I've been fortunate enough to be on both sides, be as talent, also be in production. Sometimes the budget really is just the budget, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And sometimes it does have to go to other resources before it can go to talent. Exactly. But like he said, evaluate, you know, is this something that I believe in? Is it going to benefit me? And if it does, do it. You know what I mean? But I have this theory for like, I I, I relate um, the, oh, sorry, before I say that there, but there also are people in the industry that do want to take advantage of you. Yeah, yeah, don't want to pay you and, you know, are, are very, very cheap. But they have a right to do that. And I have this theory where I kind of compare it to shopping, right? When we go shopping, when we're spending our money, we are picky about it, right? Oh, of course. Sometimes we want to go out and we want to splurge. We want to buy something expensive. Sometimes you want to go and to a cheap store and get something that's cheap. And just as long as it looks great it and, looks- and it, it will do for tonight or mm-hmm. today or for whatever, great. Or we want something in the middle. You know, not yeah, too yeah. expensive, not too high quality, but somewhere but in the middle. Somewhere not. It's the else. same theory when people are shopping for talent. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're like, you know what? As long as they look great, I don't give a hell if they're talented. Mm-hmm. That's fine. They have the right to do that. Sometimes they're like, no, we will pay whatever it takes to the top talent. That's fine too. Yep. And sometimes it's somewhere in the middle where it's like, it's a well-funded project. They can get the talent they, that they want. And if, if they're expensive, great. If they're not, better. But these people have a right to be picky about what they're spending their money on. So don't ever take it personal no, no, no. or kind of feel like you're too good for it. Again, I think a big piece of advice is knowing who you are and what's exactly. right for you. That's the only way that you're going to be able to really exist in this industry and to mm-hmm. be successful in this industry and not get too affected by feeling like people don't know your worth or want to pay you, et cetera. That, that, that's very true. Mm-hmm. I mean, in, in the industry, um, it's very important to be humble. Um, no matter how successful you get, you need to realize that there, there might be some projects that you can work for free or you have to work for free. But in the long run, the relationships you build on that set is going to take you to a project that pays very well. I mean, right. And I've been in that position that I've worked with people for free because I loved what they had to offer. I loved the project and they treat the cast and the crew like family. I truly, if they, if, they, if they can't afford to pay you, they should be able to feed you and feed you very well. Um, and that's the good thing because I've been on these sets 
And then maybe a couple of months later, they're like, hey, I got a paying gig. Mm -hmm. It's not mine, but it's a friend. I referred you. Um, what do you think? I'll send you the script. Mm -hmm. And now you're on set getting paid because of the connection you made right. on, the, on, the, on the last project. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I want to get a little personal. Okay. That's okay with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, that's fine. I want to know, um, what is your day-to-day -day life like right now compared to what you want your day-to-day -day life to be? Oh man, my day to so like I, when you so basically I guess talk me through when you wake up in the morning. What's a normal day like for you? A normal day for me would be waking up. I need coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I same, need coffee. Same. But um, I need to be inspired. I need to be motivated. I need to to like literally start my day with motivation, mm -hmm. um, because I want to feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, so hearing motivational speeches. Um, playing music that motivates me. Mm -hmm. that would get, that's what gets the ball rolling on my day. Um, I, I'm also on the computer uh, submitting my headshots and resume, mm -hmm. um, looking for different opportunities, uh, then going to the gym. Being proactive. Yeah, yeah. You have to <laughs> constantly... Uh, you're, you're an entrepreneur at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, so you, you represent yourself. Although you have representation, um, you have to literally put some work in as well. Just don't depend on, oh, I have a manager, I have an agent. No, you have to put in work too. It's a team effort. Um, so it's constantly hustling, constantly networking, constantly looking for opportunities to get yourself out there. Right. Um, so I'm constantly doing that, um, calling people, talking to people, uh, submitting headshots and resume, contacting my manager to see if there's anything that I can be doing better, you know, looking up information about people that are doing it, right. you know, um, researching, um, keeping yourself presentable. I mean, that's a, that's a, we're, we're in an industry that, that being presentable is everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to, you have to make sure you eat healthy, make sure you, you, you look good, make sure that you, you exercise, you exercise yeah. so on and so forth, because you want to stay ready so that you will never have to get ready. And that's cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's mm -hmm. and that's the thing. Um, I also do a couple of side gigs, you know, mm -hmm. um, to keep the ball rolling. I'm always working. I'm always trying to stay busy. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, staying motivated. You know, um, and one of the things that that honestly keeps me moving is, besides my cousin, I'm here by myself. There's no family here. Okay. So the people that I, that that motivate me, the people that 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 inspire me are 3,825 miles away, <laughs> you know? So, exactly. um, <laughs> so it's like, what do I need to do to make sure I'm able to travel back and forth whenever the hell I feel like? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, if, I, if I have to get a side gig, if I have to, you know, do brand ambassador work, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. You know, okay. um, if I have to work for free in acting, if I, if I have to get a, a Side job, you know, I'm gonna do it because I need to secure my dreams, right. not only for me, but for the people I love. Yeah, and the people that are watching and looking. The up people to that me are watching and looking me. up to me, man. So that being said, like, what's um, what's Christian's life like in five years? Like, what's the big goal for you? The big goal, um, I want to have several feature films out. Okay. You know, I want to have feature films. I I also um, want to inspire people to follow their dreams mm -hmm. through my acting. Okay. Um, I feel that I've been giving a gift and a platform to inspire others. Mm -hmm. I feel that the gift is not just for me, yeah. um, but it's to inspire people <laughs> that are scared to take that step. Nice. You know, um, you know, I come from the inner city. I come from one of the, the worst hoods in New Jersey, Patterson. Mm -hmm. um, and where, where I lived, a block up, People would get shot every day, and then a block up this way, people would get shot up every day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and they're taking away the performing arts from the schools, and mm -hmm. um, they're they're shutting down some of the academies and so on and so forth. Um, and I just want to inspire kids to not lose faith because it doesn't matter where you're from, yeah. it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter where you start, it's where you finish. Absolutely. You know, and I'm a kid from Patterson, mm -hmm. um, and now I'm. You know, I have a feature film, I'm on TV, and although I'm not where I want to be yet, I'm taking strides to get there, yeah. you know, and if I can do it, so can they, yeah. you know, yeah. so, so can anybody with a dream, yeah. you know? I think it's, I think a, a good thing to point out here is that you don't have to necessarily be like, 
super successful to mm-hmm. start living a life of service. Exactly. And that's and it's, that's kind of like that's what I'm dedicated to with this project. Mm-hmm. Is like I want. I'm for, I grew up in Dorchester in Boston. It's rough out there. Too. <laughs> like he said, I want to be an inspiration to kind of show that like if I can get out of there, so can you. You know what I mean? But it starts with having conversations like this. Yeah. It starts with creating platforms and opportunities that people can can learn exactly. and, and can know that that's a possibility. Mm-hmm. So I love that you said that. Thank you. And like oh and like like you said, uh, I love that you're mentioning that it's bigger than you. The yeah. dream is bigger than you. The dream is bigger know? than me. I mean, I feel that society has placed this uh, outline for our lives. You know, it's like okay, you were born, you're raised, you. You go to school, you get an education, uh, you get a job with a 401k, good health benefits, and then you raise a family, get married, blah, 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 and then die. Yeah. Where's the happiness? Where, where, where's the you know, um, satisfaction, gratification you know, of, of having something that's yours? Mm-hmm. Um, and I want people to break out that shell. I want people to, to truly hone in on what they really want to do. Mm-hmm. Like if, if, there was, if there was no obstacles... You know, there were no obstacles placed in front of yeah. you. What would that one thing be that you can do for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. And then do it. Right. Without even paying attention to the obstacles. Right. Because obstacles that you see in front of you are just a mirage. Yeah. Realistically, it's all mental blockage that you have, you know. Um, and, and it's funny because once you get closer to that obstacle, it's like a... It's, it's nothing. <laughs> no, you get it's, me? Like, it's very, very true. It's like it. All of this starts with your mindset. Yeah. Like it's like it has to click here first. Mm-hmm. That like everything that I want, all the dreams that I have built up inside of me, they're all possible. Exactly. I can do those things. It starts there first because yeah. that's what's gonna motivate you to say, okay, let me do some research today. Mm-hmm. Let me go and get my headshots. Let me pick up my life and move to a new city. Exactly. But you have to 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 know first that that life is possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? So definitely. And also. People have to know that life will try to get in your way. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're at an age that, you know, we have to pay bills, you know, health issues, you know. Oh, I need to go to doctors, dentists. Oh, my my, my phone bill. Oh, my God, rent. Adulting, adulting. Adulting. And it doesn't get easier either. You know what I mean? It's just about you pulling up. Like Mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier in our conversation where you were like, okay, what do I have to do so that I can live the life that I want to live? That's really what it comes down to. And I know people that will... You know, they'll live in really small apartments because they're like, I don't want to spend a lot of money. But it's like, if you have a desire to live in a beautiful, beautiful penthouse, apartment. do what the hell you have you to, to do to live to in that there. penthouse. Like, don't limit yourself off of being cheap to yourself. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It's all about making the sacrifices. Yeah. You know, and not being afraid to put yourself in a position to make a sacrifice. Right. You know, because once you're in the position and it seems hard, you're going to figure it out mm-hmm. because you have no other choice but to figure it right. out. Right. You know, and then after a while, you're like, oh, I made this thing such a big deal. And it's really not, you know, there's, yeah. so, there's so many things that we're going through. Like, you know, there's so many things that we can go through right now. And right now is the biggest problem of our lives. Mm-hmm. But in a week, in two weeks, in three weeks, you're going to look back and it's going to be like, oh, I got through. It. Yeah. And that's and that always happens. And I think um, I forget where I heard this quote or read it. But um, it really stuck out to me, and it says, you've already survived 100% of your worst days. Exactly. Like, think about that for a second. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You've already deep. survived 100% of your worst days. Mm-hmm. It can't get no worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you've gotten through them already, so you can do it. So don't ever, like, stop because something bad happens. Yeah. Bad things, obstacles, complications are always going to happen. So just get used to it. Like I said, hurry up and fail. Do it, fail, learn from it, move on. Anyways, we just touched base on a lot in a little bit of time. <laughs> that was quite true. impressive. Is, 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 is there you. anything else, any final thoughts that you want to share with uh, um, our audience? Final thoughts. Um, don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone. So many people, um, they never start because of fear. Mm-hmm. You know, um, take fear out of the equation. You know, go for whatever you have a passion for whatever it is that you that you want to do think about it as if there were no obstacles yeah then go for it you know the rough times are going to come but they they're not here to stay mm-hmm. you know um and you're going to you're going to be approaching obstacles and as you get more successful and as you get closer mm-hmm. the obstacles will get bigger mm-hmm. you know um but it's all about persistence yeah. it's all about going through it and it's all about staying focused and understanding that if it's in your heart to do something, it's meant to be there. Right. You know, 
Uh, you didn't, you weren't given this gift, you weren't given this passion for no reason. You were placed on this earth for a reason, mm -hmm. and that's to, to, that's to follow your heart right. and the decisions that you make and the career that you want to pursue. Pursue. Um, and just to provide some clarity, when he says um, obstacles, like you want to think of it as if there were no obstacles, just to be specific, it just means like if money wasn't an object, if where you were living wasn't an object, if you can have all the mentors in the world, what is it that you would want to spend your everyday doing? Exactly. That's how you have to approach when you're setting your goal or how you want to create the vision for your life. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've just been really serious for a little <laughs> bit, so we're going to switch gears real quick. Yeah, I have yeah. a little game that I like to play at the end with everybody. All right. Kind of ease the mood, and it's on a happy note. Well, we're happy, but you know we're, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we're happy. All right, so here's the question. Well, first of all, here's the rules. All right. So I'm going to ask you a trivia question Got that it. I need an answer to. All right. You can either, if you don't know the answer, you have a lifeline, which means you can FaceTime anybody of your choice that you know will answer and may know the answer to this question. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty much the only option you have. Yeah. Get one guess. <laughs> um, you get a prize. If I tell you the prize is in advance, it loses 50% of its value. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to ask you the question. You can tell me whether you want to just answer, whether you want to do use your lifeline, or whether you're like, fuck it, just tell me what the prize is. Okay. okay? All right, here's our question. Name is... I'll tell you it's a male. Okay. Name the celebrity uh, in the entertainment industry that has uh, three beverage brands, a record label, a clothing line, an entertainment network, and just launched a TV show. One minute a on the clock. A clothing brand? Three beverage lines. Three, three beverage, beverage brands. Line. Record label, an entertainment network, media entertainment network, and uh, just launched a TV show. Just announced a TV show. Sean P. Diddy Combs. Absolutely, yes! You better get it. <laughs> you won. Woo! The prize is knowledge for the viewers. You guys just learned something new. So, <laughs> congratulations. You know what? I was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to see what's going on because 50, 50 cents, uh, you know, but then you said network. Yeah. He only has a TV show. He yes. doesn't have a network. So yes, like, yes, yes. Good job. Yeah. That's my idol, by the way, guys. All right. So that, so, oh, wait, before we go, we're going to end with a toast. Um, I just kind of like to put some positivity out there. Of course. So what I'm toasting to today, I'm toasting to anyone that's had the balls to sit down and question themselves and what they were doing and decided that I'm going to live the right life for me. Mm. No comparing, no insecurities, no fear. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live life that's meant for me. So that's right. what I'm choosing to. Um, <laughs> how can I top that? Hold on, what's going on? Uh, I'm going to cheers to everyone that has a dream. And although you haven't pursued it yet, you're going to because you believe so much in yourself, your heart, your mind, your spirit, and your soul. Hey, there you go. All right. Cheers. cheers. All right, so that concludes our episode of The Creators Club. Um, I will post links. Um, real quick, tell people how to follow you, where to find you online. Okay, yeah, you can follow me at Official CTV on Instagram as well as Twitter. Um, Facebook is my full name. Uh, you can you can read it down here. Yeah, so I'll <laughs> put those links where you guys can find him and all the things that he's up to as well as information about those featured films. Yes. That I actually yes. want to make sure I learn more about. Please, um, please. I forgot <laughs> to mention that all of my looks for the Creators Club were curated exclusively at Target. Um, I'm going to post a link that will lead you to where you guys can find out and get a closer look at what I've been wearing. And also check out our Instagram story. That's where I'll post a, a full look at the outfit. Um, and then you guys can just ask me questions. I want to know what you guys are thinking so that we can ask those questions here and, yeah. and talk about what you guys want to know. So click that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Okay, guys. So I'm in look number two. I am here with Christian, who is my second subject for the What's day, and that on, is guys? trash in the corner, and it's all good. It's so um, it's been a long day already for me. I've been up since like <laughs> six, um, just kind of like building this set and training up and putting my looks together. As mentioned, um, all the looks I'm going to be wearing in every episode were curated exclusively at Target. So um, if you want to find out and get a closer look at what I'm wearing in the episodes, I'm going to post it on the site. Um, to kind of give you guys and give you guys some links to kind of show you how you can get these same looks. So this is all Goodfellow and Co. from Target. And yeah. <laughs>